Hello everybody, welcome to another review of Drones Visual. Today I bring you a very special review of the awaited by many FPV drone Hobson H501S. I have been hunting this drone for a while already and it has been hard to get hands on one, even here in China. I would like to thank Banggood for facilitating me this sample to review it. One of the features that attracted me a lot of the Hobson H401S besides the beautiful design and FPV was the fact that this model comes with a GPS so you will be able to use functions such as return home, GPS hold and follow me mode which certainly many of you will appreciate. I will divide my review in at least two parts. The first one will be an overview of what you get and some of the main features of the transmitter and the drone itself and the second part will be flying camera quality and functions and in the third part we will take a look inside the Hobson H400 S. Now without further ado let's take a look at the contents of the box. The first thing we will look at is the balance charger that comes with the 501S and as you can see it is a very simple one and it has two mini LEDs that will go from red to green once the charging process has been completed. Here we have the power supply that you will connect to one end of the balance charger and then on the other end you will then plug the battery. This tool over here comes handy when placing or removing the props as it locks the motors in place making the task way easier. These are the props, we have in total 6 of them so they're basically 2 spare props. The quality of the props feels really nice and they're labeled in accordance to the motor they belong to. There are no metal nuts in the props, I mean they're entirely made of plastic. Then of course we have the Hobson H501S. And here is the transmitter looking almost identical to the transmitter Hobson has used in some of their previous mini FPV quads. And finally the LiPo battery. Let's now take a close look at the features of the Hobson H501S and its transmitter. This drum comes with beautiful brushless motors that are protected by a plastic housing which is part of the body of the drone. I currently do not have information related to the KV of the motors but will update the description as soon as I find out. Under we have some transparent plastic covers that house the front and rear LEDs. These are held by two screws at either side and then under you will see some sort of a rubber dots that act as cushions to make the landing process go smoother. Here you can see it now from the side so you get a better perspective of how it looks like. Each motor or arm is labeled with a letter A or B and the propellers are also labeled A and B making it easy to find the corresponding motor. On each arm there are four openings to cool down the ESCs that are located on top and right under. Two openings are here on top and two on the bottom section of the arm. That I will show you now in a moment. These are the ones located on the bottom of the arm. The Hobson H501S comes with a Full HD camera located here at the front of the quad. You will be able to record video to either a micro SD card in the quad itself or in the transmitter, although it is recommended that you place the card uh, in the drone rather than in the transmitter. There is also an FPV transmitter connected to the camera so you will be able to see a live video feed on the transmitter, FPV goggles or any FPV monitor. And then uh, there is a golden windshield here that is basically just for decoration. Here is a view of the side of the drone and it has some nice curvy design allowing for some airflow there, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure whether I can call it aerodynamic, but it still looks pretty nice. Both plates making the body of the drone are secure with two screws on each arm for a total of eight screws. It seems rather easy to disassemble the whole unit in case we need to replace uh, some ESCs or uh, some other components inside of it. Then if you have noticed here at the bottom or the belly of the quad there are some sort of ventilation openings probably to cool down the FPV transmitter as they tend to get pretty hot and especially having the battery right on top releasing heat as well. Then on the other side you can see uh, basically a slot for the micro SD card that you can place here to record video. If we take a closer look now at the rear section of the, of the drone, we will encounter the battery compartment, which is uh, really easy to access actually. The compartment is really tight and uh, it just has the right size to fit the battery. I hope it won't be hard to pull out the battery once it becomes a little bit dilated by the heat. Uh, even now you have noticed that uh, everything seems to be tightly packed in this compartment. I think Hobson um, might in their future models start to use uh, these sort of custom sliding batteries like you'll find in models like the Phantom and so on. I think they're really comfortable. 
And then if you take a closer look at the connector for the battery, this one, the blue one here, you can see that it's an EC2 connector, not an EC3. Now I want to basically show you that here inside the drone there is this tiny USB connector and if I understood correctly from the manual uh, it says that it's reserved uh, to engineers from Hobson but then some of you might want to venture and connect it and try to do some, some changes that's basically up to you. Probably in the future it could be used for a, a firmware upgrade or something like that. Here we have the battery which has a capacity of 2700 milliamps and a voltage of 7.4 uh, volts. According to Hobson it should give a flying time of around 20 minutes. I would be really impressed if I even managed to get to, to that time. Uh, just for reference so you can compare it uh, with a 4S battery of, of 2700 milliamps that you often find in your Chusons uh, CX20 or Quantum Nova drones. They're almost the same length but of course the Chirson one is thicker as you can see. This might answer any questions related to the possibility of using these kind of batteries in the Hobson H501S as I know these are common questions. Now let's take a closer look at the transmitter that comes with the H401S. The transmitter is very similar to the ones that we see in uh, quads like the Hobson h uh, 107D with some uh, differences of course. It is very light and super comfortable to, comfortable to hold and this one is mode 2. To power the transmitter you will need 4 AA batteries. I wish they would have used LiPo batteries for it as well, but well. Pressing then uh, one of the sticks down in the transmitter will activate the headless mode and then pressing the other stick down will basically activate the follow me mode. Both sticks feel, sp they feel pretty nice, uh, but let's see how respond responsive the Hobson H401S with this when flying, whether it's actually fun to fly or you know it's sort of a, like a rather boring quad, we'll see about that. Here on the left side we will see a button and a switch. The button uh, has an icon on top that basically tells you the function, in this case it's the photo function and you will see photo showing up on the screen and then we have the GPS switch that activates a GPS uh, mode. Here you can see a couple of plugs, according to the manual the upper one is supposed to be your for your FPV goggles and the one under it says it has no function. Then if we move to the right side we'll see the button here to record video and again you will see record on the screen once you press it and then on top of it we have the return home function. Uh, the transmitter uh, comes with an FPV screen on it and it has 4.3 inches and I'm assuming the resolution should be uh, like 720 by 480 but I'm not quite sure whether this is the actual resolution. Here you can see a, a slot for the micro SD card and a USB plug that will allow you to connect the transmitter to a computer. Then I assume that here under these structures, uh, here we might find the transmitting antenna and perhaps on the other side the FPV antenna, but I will need to look inside the transmitter to make sure. As uh, you can see, we have uh, the same structures uh, that you'll find in other transmitters, basically the buttons to trim in case it flies irregularly right out of the box. Let's now take a look at some of the options we might see on the screen. We'll slide the power button up to turn on the screen and of course right now we won't see any image as the drone is powered off, but otherwise we will see a live video feed. You will notice that moving the sticks will cause the graph on the screen to shift indicating us the position of the sticks. Then, uh, if we're gonna try now and move the switches here up, we see no messages, but that could be because the quad is not uh, powered. But maybe if it's powered, we'll see something else. And then pressing the basically video mode, we'll see record. And then if we press the photo uh, button, we will see the photo function indicating us that we're taking photos basically. Then, if you notice here on the right uh, top corner of the screen, you will see an indicator telling us the charge of the battery. And then under we will see some GPS coordinates. Okay, this concludes the first part of my review. So far I'm liking the build quality and the design of the Hobson H501S, although I would like to, uh, I would have wanted to have a different kind of battery. I mean, uh, sort of a phantom style sliding battery that you can basically have, as the word tells you, uh, slide in and out with some LED indicators. Uh, I'm not sure whether some of you might agree with this, but I think you would, would, would have been uh, comfortable. Also, I would like uh, to have a LiPo battery in the transmission meter rather than just uh, AA batteries. 
Uh, the last information I have regarding the flying range uh, of the Hobson S501, I mean H501S, will be that uh, the flying radius uh, will be confined uh, to 300 meters and the altitude to 100 meters. This is not a very long distance, but I believe it will still be enough uh, to many new pilots. In the second part of my review, I will try to do some flying using GPS mode and try uh, return home functions and so on. Plus, use the camera uh, to record some footage to check how is the quality and so on. I would really appreciate some feedback from you. And if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask. If you're interested in the topic of drones and unmanned aerial vehicles, please subscribe to my channel for the latest reviews and news straight from China. I hope to see you in my next video.